This is an EP2 Express LRS receiver, and for some time now, it has been the smallest and most compact receiver in the entire FPV hobby. It is the receiver choice for racers and freestyle pilots alike, offering low latency and decent range. But what about its durability? A lot of pilots have indicated that during a crash, this antenna here has been the first to receive any substantial damage. So what's the solution? Do we just crash our drones a little bit softer? <laughs> Well, Beta FB has a better solution, offering this light receiver here with a flat antenna. So let's take a look at this receiver and see how well it performs. Okay, so here's the receiver right here. Very simple packaging, no unboxing knife required, just the Beta FB logo on here and a transparent front side right here. All right, so let's get this out. So the first thing here is this receiver is in a small Ziploc bag. We'll put that right here. Then we have a wiring harness here for said receiver. We can wire this up to your drone. Then you have two shrink wraps right here. Pretty nice transparent shrink wrap. It's cool that they offered two of them and that's gonna protect the receiver and isolate it from other parts of the drone. And then you have this beta FPV card with a QC here. You can just scan this and go to their website for help or support. So let's take a closer look at this receiver. This thing is really nice, guys. Wow, these receivers are just surprisingly smaller and smaller every time. All right, so here's the receiver here. I know you can't see it. This thing is so small, guys. Look how small that is. All right, so the first thing I noticed here, obviously, is the flat antenna. Obviously, it's red here, and it's substantially different than the ceramic tower antenna that I have right here as a reference. Now, Beta FB has indicated that they also have used a thinner board here, three millimeters. This thing is really thin, guys. So a receiver this side makes it really ideal for like tiny whoops if you put this in a small whoop or even some kind of a freestyle drone because you're not gonna be going pretty far because Express LRS is so efficient and so good with its power and its range. So on the back here, the first thing that jumps out is the writing here it says Express LRS 2.4G V1.1. So this is version 1.1, that's very important. This is the second iteration of this receiver and they've made some improvement offering more consistency and a higher performance of this receiver. So we'll see how it performs today. Besides that the chip looks pretty good, nothing out of the ordinary. There is still Wi-Fi in here, so you can update this via Wi-Fi if you want to. Besides that everything here looks pretty good, very, very small. The pads though aren't that small, so it looks like it's a reasonable size to do some soldering. Now, I've done multiple videos on how to set up an Express LRS receiver in your drone. I'll leave that video linked above and below so you can take a look at it. So we're gonna go to the bench, wire this up, and then take this for a flight, and then I'll give you my impressions once I get back.
we're back from our flight test and I had some time to take a look at the footage and the light receiver with the flight antenna did a pretty decent job. Now let's talk about how I conducted this test. Now I used a Nano Express LMS module set at 100 milliwatts and at 250 hertz. So right in the middle of the road, a nice sweet spot, not too powerful and not too low. So obviously if I set this at 500 milliwatts, then I'd have to fly really, really far to get any significant degradation of the signal. So I thought 100 milliwatts would be a nice sweet spot. And obviously your performance will vary if you do bump up the power or reduce the power in your respective module. Now I did numerous tests with two different receivers. Obviously I'm testing the flat receiver in this drone, but I do want to compare it to the standard tower antenna in my other drone that I have right here. So we flew a few packs on this one here with the flat antenna, just because I didn't want to have any bias or any kind of influence from other drones or other receivers. And then we switched over to the standard towered antenna here or mini tower antenna here and did a few packs on this as well. And finally, I went back to the flat antenna again and did a third set of flying just to reconfirm what I felt with the first round of flying. Now I flew these drones in different places, both near and far, and especially places where I knew were challenging for both my VTX and my RX. So based upon my test, what information did I gather? The results are really good, but predictable. The light radar with the flat antenna did a really good job experiencing no fail safe, but had a lower signal compared to the mini tower counterpart. Now I used link quality and RSSI DBM to make my assessment with these two receivers. And the difference in signal was between 10 and 30 DBM in certain places, depending on where I flew. Now, as far as the link quality, the two were very similar, hovering between 96 and 100%, but I did notice some more variances or variables with the link quality with the flat antenna. Now, where I was flying these things can vary anywhere between 100 and 300 to 400 feet away from myself. And never once did I feel like this drone couldn't perform. I'm obviously looking at my DBM and my link quality. And although the DBM was going down, the link quality still stayed between 96 and 100%. Now I have all my stats and signal strengths here, but the receiver with the tower antenna did a little bit better job, guys. Now, would I use this flat receiver for long range? Uh, probably not, and I don't think this was intended for that. This receiver was designed specifically because people who crashed their drones were having this thing broken or damaged pretty easily. Another potential for this receiver would be in tiny whoops. They're really restricted for space and weight, and this receiver here would be a perfect candidate for a very small whoop. So what's my conclusion on this light receiver with the flat antenna? I'd say this is a really good option for pilots who knows the limitation of this receiver and who's willing to trade performance or a little bit of performance for durability and weight. Now, if you wanna see a good example of how far you can get with these small receivers with the towered antenna, I've made a video on that. I'll leave it linked right here. So thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video. Peace.